Welcome to Season 2 of the Mapleside Chats, your glimpse into the Sieves NBA. This podcast presents you with the inside scoop on what really happens behind the scenes at China's top business school. Located in Shanghai on Hongfeng Road or Red Maple Road, the China-Europe International Business School aims to develop tomorrow's business leaders with a China depth, global breadth mindset. Sounds intriguing? Let's get started. Okay, hello everyone. This is episode one of the Mapleside Chat podcast series. So as you can see, we are taking over from season one, which was done by the NBA 23 batch. And here I have my two team members from NBA 24. So my name is Will and I'm from the UK. I've been living in China for four and a half years. And previously I was working in education and doing the function of general management. And I also have my two team members, which are Ariel and Yuan Yuan. So why don't we start with Ariel? Could you introduce yourself? Hi, guys. I'm Ariel, and I'm from Taiwan, China. And I've been living in China for, well, ever since I was really small. So pretty much nearly a native. And uh, before coming to Seeps, I was working in retail and trade. I founded my own, with my family, we founded a food company um, that specialized in importing foods from abroad. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be a part of the podcast team. And we are grateful for the great work that uh, MBA 23 batch have done over the past year. And we'll, I will pass on to Yuan Yuan. Hello, everyone. I'm Yuan Yuan, and I am come from China. And before saves, I come, uh, before MBA, I, I was working at a tech company on online education, and I was in charge of the marketing department. So I'm really glad to join this program because uh, I really love to listen podcasts and I really want to share our stories to other people who are interested in our MBA life. So I think our goal with this podcast is to continue on some of the great episodes that we had in season one. But in season two, we're also going to take our own spin on it. So we're going to look for things that are maybe unique about our batch, some like interesting conversations that we can have together, and then also things that the three of us are passionate about in particular. So maybe we could quickly introduce uh, one episode we're excited about doing in the future. For example, I'm hoping to maybe talk about technology and gaming, as that's somewhere that I would really like to explore after my MBA journey. And we also have some other people in our batch who previously worked in the industry. Ariel, what about you? I am actually excited to share about the club activities we have on campus. Um, the reason is, before coming into SEEPS, the, all the information I could get were from the website. And what I was interested in before coming was that, what are these clubs for and who are they for? What are the activities or events that they would host? And uh, we will have an episode where we invite club leaders to come in and give us a brief introduction of what they do in their clubs. Awesome. Well, this is a brief insight into the team that is going to be running season two of the Mapleside Chats podcast. And now let's get straight into episode one, which is going to be all about friendship and networking at Seeps. Okay, welcome, everyone. So today I am joined by my co-host, Ariel as well as George, Elva, and Alex. So maybe you guys could just give a brief self-introduction and share with the listeners, I don't know, just something interesting about yourself. So let's start with George. Okay, uh, hi everyone, uh, the name is George. Uh, uh, my background, uh, I guess I grew up in Taiwan, but also uh, lived in New Zealand and then Canada, then back to Taiwan. So uh, coming to see, so my first time in China and look forward to share something with you guys today. Awesome. And then Alex, maybe you could give us a quick self-introduction. Sure. So this is Alex, uh, originally born in China, uh, but I've been living in Canada for more than 12 years. And uh, it is the first time that I come back to China it's for, for the past uh, 10 years. Amazing. And then lastly, Elva. Hi, guys. This is Elva. Uh, I was born in Shanghai. I grew up in Japan and uh, went back to Shanghai to live for a little bit with family and then went back to Japan again. And so in total, I lived in like Japan for like almost 17 years. And yeah, and there's a fun fact that I actually stay in Japan longer than the 
the one and only real Japanese students in our cohort. <laughs> so as you can see, we brought together people that have maybe they have some kind of connection to China. Either they were born here or maybe had family here and then have decided to come back specifically for the Siebes MBA. So maybe George, you could start us off. Why did you decide to come back to China or to come to China for the first time? Uh, I think for me, because uh, I in my previous job is more I was a product manager and so it's more marketing related. So for me, doing marketing, I think the scale of the market is always very important in terms of what I'm thinking about where my career should go. So China being a big market, I feel like that, is, that yields a lot of... Uh, so China being a big market, it yields a lot of uh, opportunities, I, I think, and especially for marketing. So that was a detraction. And, um, and plus there was a, a good MBA school, an MBA program like Siebes, so... You know, it's, it's a good way to kind of make that transition, not a soft landing, not a hard landing. So that's my logic. Yeah, I just want to add top of it. I have the same uh, thought uh, as George, as, as, as a, a soft landing. So this is kind of important for people who have been living abroad for a pretty long time. It's China has been changing for the past decade and rapidly. Uh, if if, if uh, how I feel about this, is uh, I'm probably getting more familiar with uh, Canada rather than China, even though I was born here. But uh, uh, Sims is a good place to give us a two years of full-time MBA to allow us to get familiar with the environment, get adapted with the local cultural. It is, uh, we think, is extremely important to uh, fully adapt it after we graduate. Okay. Uh, I guess these two people, they gave a very professional answer. So I will just ask something like from different aspects. It's very chill, like for me, it's, uh, not only for like professional like career development or something, but most importantly, my families and my like old friends, they're in Shanghai. So, and at that time, I was actually at the like transaction or like to think about, do I really stay in Japan for like forever or like for more more couple of years or do I want to come back to China to like, because I was like in a, a very nice age to think about that kind of thing. So. Yeah, and I just decided to come back to China, even even though I live like longer in Japan than in China. But, like sometimes I still feel like I don't. I'm not sure where I belong to, but but like from deep inside of me, I still wanted to come back to Shanghai and to try it to give it a shot. Like if that doesn't work, I would just go back to Japan, maybe, or or I would just stay in Shanghai. Yeah, so like main. I think this is actually my main point that why I come want to come back to China. Not like very professional one though. Just out of curiosity, because all of you have been away from China or well, for in George's case, he's never been to China. Like you've been abroad for a very long time. How long did it take for you to uh, make that decision or consider the, the option of coming back or coming to China and then to actually apply and then <clears throat> coming to SEEPS, how long was that process? Was that years, months, or like just a few days? Uh, for me, I think it actually took me a long time. But I, I think it's like after the COVID started, because like everything has changed in like almost all the countries. And like in Japan, actually, it has a very big negative uh, wave. Like, people are not that energetic anymore. And, but I still, but like on the contrast, I can see like China, like from outside China, I see like people, I mean like maybe some politics things or like something are not that good, but like people are very positive and doing, trying to do something new. And a lot, actually a lot like new business or like new opportunities are actually coming out because of the COVID. And I see this, like the environment and the vibe is very like positive and but that took me a long time because during that time, my career is actually like at the like promoting period too. So I have to like give up the career in Japan and decide to come back to China. So a bit long time. Yeah, I think for me, it's similar. Um, I had a decent job and where, where I was able to do a lot of things. Uh, so uh, I think I was, the idea of pursuing an MBA probably came around I think April, I think around April or May in uh, 2021, then I decided to uh, really pursue it 
I think it was during the summer, uh, ended up quitting my job at uh, end of October. But I had to do the GRE first because I was a notoriously bad student and uh, undergraduate. So um, I did that for three months and then started applying uh, for schools uh, after the Chinese New Year. So uh, again, I'm a very bad student, especially when it comes to math. So I can't really tell you how long that is, you know, probably eight, I'm guessing eight months, but don't don't take my answer for it. So that was my process. So I, I, I have a I have the thought to come back to China that was beginning 2021 uh, because my the company I, I, I worked for before the menu life uh, the company we have actually have a policy for relocation so we will we'll be offered for a choice that uh, to relocate it uh, in a different location worldwide uh, that was the first time I think about maybe that was a good time that I move out from Canada but that policy that uh, program eventually didn't work out, but that still raised me the interest and attention to uh, come back to China. And then I realized maybe pursuing an MBA in CIPS would be the best choice to explore more opportunities, getting to know more people. Uh, I think that this is the, the so far I can think of the best way to uh, strengthen myself with the local cultural, uh, the, 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 the industry knowledge so that I can get ready when I graduate. Yeah, I think talking to our classmates, a lot of people have very similar stories of they uh, they were thinking about doing an MBA for a while. And then either it was they wanted to do some big like career switch or they were looking to come back to China. Um, and I know that was true for me. Like I was looking to do a big change, but I really wanted to stay in Shanghai. And then the fact that Siebs was here was just uh, was very attractive. And then so, Alex, is there anything that's really surprised you since you've gotten back? Like what, what has been the same as what you expected? And then what has been like just completely different? Mm -hmm. So what's been the same is uh, the, the whole school environment, the culture are very similar as how the North America business school being set up. This is, this is the, the school that kind of a little surprised me that we, the, all our courses have been, te been taught by English and we have many uh, English speaking prof professors and lecturers. And actually, many of the students are came back from abroad. Uh, but what really surprised me is people are passionate. Like people are keen to learn, to to know more new things, and and uh, uh, and uh, m most of the students are willing to share their experience in different industries. That 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 really that really opened the window for me to to know more stuff. That that's something that I didn't expect being that abroad. So that's something that surprised me. Mm. Do you have Do you have any specific examples that you can think of? Absolutely. So, so my background is in the finance, finance and the, 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 the consulting area. But when I came back, I realized that many uh, students that uh, in the, the totally different uh, industry backgrounds, like healthcare or uh, high tech, uh, I, I thought those are extremely sophisticated industry that probably not that easy to understand. But the students are really willing to share their insights and to try to use easy language to let us, those uh, non-professional in that specific area, to easily understand. So I learned so much about different industries from my friend. What is like what same as what you expect? And what has been really surprising? Mm, so for me, I, I I didn't really expect things would be same. I guess one thing, probably myself, you know, uh, as coming in. Uh, to a new environment, uh, be it a country or a new school, and you're meeting all these different people, and uh, it, it takes a while for you to try to fit it, right? And you gotta do it in a way that, that that's kind of like similar to yourself, like you're not going off character, but at the same time, you got you should, um, you know, want to grow, you know, change from that. Uh, so I think for this journey, I I, I try to uh, stay true to myself. Um, if I'm not sure if it answers your question, but that that's kind of my way of take looking at it. What is different? I think, uh, well, first of all, uh, Shanghai is very big, you know, and the traffic is just terrible. So I hate that. But, uh, it was so, but since we're mostly hanging out on campus, so that's okay. Uh, I also really enjoyed the fact that we don't need to use cash no more. So I don't have to carry my wallet everywhere. So that means uh, there's one less thing I will have to worry about losing, you know, because I lose my wallet all the time. But you lose your cell phone as well. Yeah, I do lose my cell phone, but for some reason they always come back to me. So, you know, the What's universe is the universe is on my side. Right. So I think for me, that's something that I can think of right now.
Um, for me, actually, yeah, like like Jordan, I didn't really like expect anything because like Shanghai is the place that I feel I'm familiar to, but at the same time, I don't really feel like I'm from Shanghai or something because I was away for too long. But like, yeah, actually, when I came, when I after I came back and came into the cities, mm, actually everything like worked as my like how I imagined before. But the what surprised me, I guess, is I feel I gained more like passion or energy from our classmates more than than more than I expected. A very positive effect, very positive influence from our classmates. I didn't actually expect this, or because like for for me, uh, doing MBA or like coming to CS, there are a lot like reasons for that. But like for some people, for example, want to learn something from the classmates or something, and I actually didn't expect that much. I mean, like like gaining new friends is a good thing, but. Didn't like trying too hard, but I feel like actually everyone around me gave me a lot like positive influence that I didn't think about before, and that actually changed my side. I I think like inner something that's yeah actually kind of surprised me now. And the traffic is too bad. I know like <laughs> that's something surprised me too. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just kind of want to add on that, like piggyback on that. I think、uh, the amount of inspirations. Yeah,、uh, it's the... a corny word, but like、uh, <laughs> wh- whether it's from you know your classmates, but、uh, you know the classes that we take. Even though right now we only like been to foundational courses,、uh, but you can still get something out of it, and that in itself is really cool. Because I think for a lot of people, that's why they decided to you know come to MBA, right? To to kind of reshape their、mm-hmm. the way they think. A little bit, and I've definitely had a lot of、uh, instances like that. I want to add that it's actually a, a quite hard.、Um, I mean, like something that didn't work very well from what I expected before. Like, as I said, I have like old friends in Shanghai here, and before I came back, I was thinking, oh, I finally can come back to like meet these people, like. Every not every day, but like very frequently, right? Very often, not like once in a year or something. Like I was very happy for that. But after I came back, and especially after I like came into sleeps, like the environment is totally new, and like everyone has different experience and living in a different, very different world. So, so to how to like, I actually have a hat. A little bit hard time to maintain my like, like old friends, right? Relationship, friendship, something because because I came back to Shanghai because of them, like they are one of my reason that I want to come back to Shanghai. But actually, I find like if you 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 are living in a different world, it's quite hard. Yeah, it's I- a hard reality, tough. I definitely agree. Like I've been in Shanghai for almost five years, so I've like been really lucky to meet some great friends. But literally during first term and also so far in term two, it's like you go into hibernation and you're living on campus in just a completely different world. And my friends have been like so supportive, but it's like I remember when I was seeing them like around Christmas. It's like I hadn't seen them in like two three months, and we live in the same city. Like we're not that far away, but just you're so busy, and also you're throwing yourself into classes. You want to meet everyone, you want、sure. to make new、yeah. friends and make、yeah. connections. Uh, but it was it was hard really trying to balance this new life and the old life of people I still really really cared about and making sure like giving time for them as well. I think one thing for sure on that topic was that、um, the first at least the first two terms were really busy and、um, to busy. maintain a relationship、um, it requires time.、Um, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that you won't have the time later on, right? So I think. Um, it's inter- for me. It's interesting to make new friends in in the campus, and then re- and re- really, you really need to dedicate your time not only in like friends and academic as well, but then、um, you、mm. you do have you know to spend more time on your new friends. But then、um, those old relationships, we can 
well, after the history that we've had together, I think um, it, it will be easy to retain that and regain that afterwards when you know this, this semester is not as busy. not that busy. Mm-hmm. Exactly, mm-hmm. 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 I agree. Yeah, I, I I had the same feeling that originally b- before I came back, I've been planned to meeting some friends in different cities. But when school start, like everyone knows how busy it is, I have to post the phone the 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 meet up with uh, with many friends, and then when time goes, uh, kind of think about okay, I really should do it. Uh, otherwise, my, the friends might think okay, maybe I'm not you know being that close to them since I meet new friends. So this is something that uh, it's a little hard. It's pretty hard to keep a balance for the first two terms but i think when the when 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 term three starts it's it's something that we should um, we wish we should keep up yeah you know i actually have a different point of view because uh i didn't i don't have any like pre-established you know connections well not a lot in in china uh so for me coming here you know it's just on my own and uh, I guess it made made things easier for me because all I need to do is make friends, and um, I don't have to worry about. Well, I do have to worry about people from my past, but that's okay. I mean, uh, you find time for that, and for me, so came coming here. Uh, my focus was, you know, just meeting a lot of different new people, uh, which was uh, one of the most enjoyable uh, things that I've been doing in Seas, right? You know, it, yeah, just getting to know people, making friends. Um, you know, having a having a good time, which I love. So, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I mean, right. just to to build on that. I mean, even though I was saying it was hard to maintain these friendships, I was also super excited to come to Seeb's to meet 120 new people that I hope would become friends for life. Because I've been living in China for four and a half years. I was here through the entire pandemic and. It was really hard watching friends leave. Like I had mm. every year I was going to like multiple leaving parties. There were times when I would have a leaving party every single week of people leaving Shanghai. And I think if you don't have that support network, it can be really hard to stay in a city like this, which is so fast paced. So I was really excited to meet a bunch of people who I thought would be like minded and maybe are going to be making a career in Shanghai. Maybe you're going to be making a career in China. But I know through the connections we make that these could easily be like, friends for the rest of your life kind of thing so that was something that also while it might be hard to maintain relationships it's also you're making really valuable relationships at the same time moving on to the next question um i think one other thing that we have noticed is that coming back to china it takes it's uh, although there are pros i mean not i mean there you gain a lot from this experience but there are also things that you have to give up or like make a decision on before coming back and uh, i think Alex, um, when you decided to come back from from Ch- Canada, and uh, um, what was the hardest thing that you had to make a decision on? I think the hardest thing it's uh, it's um, is to jump out of the comfortable zone. Just Canada, it's it's a place that is chilling, it's comfortable, it's it's it's, it's the place that been getting familiar for the past decade. Uh, it, it's not an easy decision. To jump out from from there, and and we know that China, it's, it's China mainland, especially for mainland, is a more competitive industry and in, in the workplace. So that's something I have to uh, uh, like do a lot of research to 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 get to know as much as possible about how really the environment is, uh, and uh, to give up all the uh, all what I've gained in, in Canada. It's, it's also a hard decision to make since I've been spent a long time there. Uh, and another thing, so I, I came back with my family. Uh, I have kids there as well. So kids born in, in Canada. So if if so if when he came back, to, like came back with me to China, it's a brand new world for to him. So it must be a lot of uh, uh, pro- probably a lot of challenges for 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 everyone in this family. Uh, my, m- lucky thing is my 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 wife is Chinese and and. Um, and um, uh, my mom, my parents are all supporting my decision, so that makes <clears throat> my uh, transition more uh, smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think family support and friend support is extremely important to 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 help me to get adapt to this new environment. Mm. Sure. I think family for me, uh, uh, my family is like all in different places right now, but uh, I think for me, maybe uh, leaving to a different city, it's a uh, uh, my dad is is on my mind is because the reason I uh, I left Canada, I went back to Taiwan to to work is because 
he had a heart attack. And so our entire family kind of went back. Uh, so I, I went back as well. And so in the last eight years, we've been living together. And, but, uh, you know, I have to come here. And so I guess that's something that's always been on my mind. So I would agree with Alex, you know, family is probably, you know, not being able to spend time with family is probably one of the cons. But then again, you know, Taipei is only a two hour plane ride. And now that the border is opened up, I think it's going to make things a lot easier. Mm. Have you been finding, do you think you've been so busy that you haven't thought about family as much? Or have there been times since you've been at CMT, you've been like, oh, I really miss family. I've been drinking too much. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think I'm it's kidding. fine. I'm kidding. Uh, He's not kidding. <laughs> this is what I'm part of. This NBA is my journey. interview, right? This is, <laughs> yeah, I do get to answer the questions. Right? No. Um, yeah, honestly, yes. Uh, I think Elva, Alex would all agree that, uh, especially with us, because since we have a shorter uh, school, I guess, term or years, so, so everything's very happening very fast with one deadline after another. And then we all have, uh, our own priorities, whether it's in looking for jobs, uh, you know, meeting people, hanging out, uh, drinking, you know, for, for me, I guess. Um, so it does play into that, but I think, uh, that that's something that I guess I am learning to be, uh, more in tune to is that even though you have a lot of different things but you have to know your priorities in life you know not just you know in this year or two mm -hmm. but if family is important to you then you really just got to make an effort to kind of like maintain that mm -hmm. never really was my thing before but coming here that has begun to change uh to what extent i um, haven't really thought about it but that's my view on it mm -hmm. actually speaking of like the cons that is leave family or like not cannot spending time a lot of time with them well i think like what is funny on me is because i my family is here i they're in like in shanghai but actually i don't really spend time or like going back with to to my family's like to my parents home and they and they often like we're very chill and they are actually quite laughing at me like do you, I don't really feel like you actually came back from Japan I still feel like you're you're outside China or something the only thing you come back to do is the laundry and <laughs> do the laundry and go go back to school <laughs> I mean I think we could all agree it is ridiculous that you go home to do laundry when Why? we have perfectly good laundry facilities at school no I think it's ridiculous that she's not taking my laundry with her <laughs> oh yeah maybe thank you for pointing that, right, maybe. Right, right. Think <laughs> so, of me next time. Yeah, come here next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ash, so what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you do your laundry? <laughs> you do your laundry. <laughs> Yeah, they, when they're talking about the like the family issue, I thought like, oh, I don't really have family issue, but actually I have some <laughs> this kind of yeah, I don't really meet my family as well, surprisingly. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I actually have the same problem. <laughs> Elva, my, my family are actually in Shanghai, so it's easy for me to, you know, to send the laundry back <laughs> and, and on the weekends. But I think um, I'm actually, because uh, I have actually been living in Shanghai for a very long time and worked in Shanghai. And then what on the, like, as opposed to many of you, my parents, what one of the things, the things that my parents would say is, they don't get to see me as much um, as before coming to Seeps because you do have to spend more time. And I actually think one other thing is that although I don't get to spend more time with my family, um, that was when friends in Seeps are um, helpful. It, it's like, although you don't get to spend time with your family, but then the friendship that you gain here and the inspiring people that you meet here, I, I think I think it really... Um, I wouldn't say fulfills, but then it, it it actually makes the days like academic days or like the hard days easier. I, I think for me also, I think one thing is um, while living without family is it kind of sucks, but I actually don't mind. I actually quite enjoy it because uh, <laughs> yeah. no, I, I lived at home. I lived at home before. Right. So so uh, it's most of the time just me and my dad. And, you know, as you get older, you, you, you understand that this is a choice that you made. But at the same time, it's like, 
you just want to get out and be on your own. And I think coming to Siebes, living on campus is a really good kind of transition where it's more fitting of, you know, what I wanted personally. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I absolutely agree with what George said. This is when, when, when boys grow up, it's kind of hard to maintain or handle the relationship with, 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 with daddy. Since I, I my, 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 since my mom's in Canada and, and when I come back to China, it's only me and my daddy in the, at home. And sometimes it's, 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 it's even, you know, I, I feel it may be more comfortable if I live in, on, on campus with friends. That, that's different feelings. And, and since I go, I, I went to Canada for, for 10 years, but my dad is always in China. So it's, it's still creating the distance be, between us. Well, but I, overall, I think it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good timing for me to come back to rebuild that relationship with him. Uh, since, since, mm. since, since he's my dad, like, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a lot that I can learn from him. And, uh, and, uh, and, and after all, it's, it's a family that everyone should be, uh, uh, involved into the family business, the, the, the family deals. So th th those are things I think that we can last up for forever, basically. That's right. Mm. That's right. So sort of moving on a little bit. And then, so we've now, we've been at the school for four, five months or so. And do you think you have any memories or any stories that have been so far sort of the most interesting or unforgettable time that's happened in Sieves? I'm looking at three people who are all gesturing to each other to start talking. So, uh, okay, I, maybe, maybe, maybe I just guess that. <laughs> Go for so it, something that's really unforgettable is people are... I think we treated each other just like a family. Since we don't, we, we, we live together, we drink together. Like George, I always see him in the, in the lounge and then had a, had, had a jingle on his head. So, so, but, 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 but back, uh, back to the day, like if people need help, in, including, let's say, somebody's preparing an interview, some, uh, so, somebody's ha ha having been struggled with the homeworks, we all sit down and we spend time with him, uh, go through everything they know, uh, try to help that, pe that, 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 that friend to, to go through those, uh, tougher, those tough times. So everything that we can, we, we can basically discuss everything and the people are helped from all different angles with all different resources. So, so that, that's really make me unforgettable that we don't have distance. Even, even when we spent two years here, uh, but it, it seems that we've been no for decades. Yeah, I really agree, especially because like it, academically, we are competing with each other. But I wouldn't say it feels that way when we're like preparing for exams because people are so willing to share study guides, to teach each other the content, to make little study groups. Like everyone's always sharing their cheat sheets. And so basically everyone's using the same one. And I think that's such a nice environment compared to if it was more like cutthroats and if people were trying to like kill each other to get better exam results. Because at the end of the day, while we do, we did come here to learn something and want to gain that, I think. Everyone also realizes that the connections we're building and some of the things outside of the classroom is like equally or more important. Um, just want to add on to that. Um, the cheat sheet that we were talking about were actually for open book exams, not exam <laughs> <laughs> not the cheat sheet that we would normally think it is. For you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe George, do you have like an unforgettable or like special thing that you think you've experienced since you've been here at Seeps? Oh, you think you still remember? Uh, the most recent one, this is going to be a bad example, but I thought it was pretty funny that yeah, uh, I forgot to bid for my electives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I totally forgot so, about this. So a little bit of backstory. Yeah. We had, I think it was three days to do this uh, through an online system to bid for electives. And it means this is for term three and four. And that is the only way in round one you could maybe get what you wanted. So, George, what did you decide to do? I didn't do anything. I didn't decide. I didn't even know there was a... Yeah. Okay. So I feel like my image and reputation has been damaged up to this point. Uh, but uh, so to, you know, to make... All right. So I think what I was thinking is I was so focused on group projects. You know, we had a lot of deadlines on uh, 14th, right? February 14th. So I was so like focused on that. I totally forgot that the, the elective deadline was on 13th. So I did that. Uh, I mean, I didn't do that, didn't bid. And, you know, I, I have an interesting take on it, though. I, I am, uh, I've always had this, I live my life with a blind faith that everything is going to work out eventually. And up to this point, it has. So my take is, uh, 
even well, I luckily I still get to do another round. And even if I don't get the ideal electives or not enough electives, I think I kind of felt an urgency in terms of okay, so things happen, bad things happen. Um, but you can put your focus on other things that actually means, for example, really putting an effort into trying to find a job or an internship, and you know, think about potential business opportunities in terms of entrepreneurship. And so for me, I, I, I know it's kind of naive to think that, but um, I actually, while it was shocking to myself, but immediately I found a source of energy, you know, that, that made me kind of want to do other things even more. So I'm kind of a bit twisted that way. Yeah. I think, that that would be, that. I think that would be an inspiring story. <laughs> for a the true coming, story, too. True story, too. Like coming, coming, yeah. students coming year. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't, even if you forget to bid, right. you still have other things that you can do. Or if you don't see me, you know, there's not a good story. So you, you can be the judge. I <laughs> hope to see you guys. <laughs> uh, but I do think that this is going to be a, an epic story for the, for, the, for, the re for the new students. We shall see what happens. Mm. Okay, I actually have a very specific, uh, like memory. I mean, like that came up my, to my mind like directly after I heard that question. But I just wanted to wait and see what others talking. So, uh, Sunny Ka. Mm. Okay, the a little bit like background story for Sunny Ka. It's a sports uh competition, sports match in Shanghai, like for all the NBA schools in Shanghai. And we had our basketball team. Uh, that was actually, like, I will never forget that moment. I mean, that period of time in my life. Because, like, for me personally, I love basketball. That means a lot to me. And I did, like, very mm, similar thing in back to university as well, like, as a team manager within the like fem female basketball team. I was the team manager, but like in CS, we formed the team and like we d did everything like by ourselves. Not like, oh, there was a team before and you just went there to manage or something. Not like that. We did everything and we create everything. We made the team and like try to figure out how it works. Like we made everything from scratch by ourselves, not mm. only by like captain or like by some leader or something we figured out like with all the members and i feel like i'm having like 25 sons <laughs> my like <laughs> yes <Yeah>. mama <laughs> <laughs> naughty nasty sons yeah elba just had all the stinky all boys, the stinky yeah. boys. <laughs> like but it was fun it was a lot there were a lot of work to do i mean like to um call the people to practice or like to figure out how it how we can do better and to like design all the clothes like jersey and <laughs> to buy all the things for the boys for the sons yeah but it was like and especially when the term just starts we were super busy and like the for the assignments or like academic wise but still like you have a lot of passion on the the whole yeah, yeah activities yeah, a lot of passion. yeah. and as like that <laughs> i feel like we got very strong very strong bond within the group like within the team within this uh, community this family i will say yeah. yeah i think the most inspiring thing from that is that you guys did that in the most chaotic first few yeah. weeks of term one yeah. and you still manage to you know pull that off yeah. that is very very inspiring and it was sorry i was just asking it, it wasn't like well well we of course we want to win or something if yeah but the most important thing is we want to have like have fun for like everyone that like, i want everyone to enjoy the moment not because of like i have to beat this team or something well and and actually like for the first match, uh, we actually won. And that moment, I feel like everyone was like almost crying and like everyone tried so hard. And all, not only the players, but also like the the cheerleaders. Yeah. <laughs> the cheerleaders and the audience, they're a very... Every people got like 
inspired and like sure. yeah for that moment was very like unforgettable okay i think uh one another uh one of the most recently uh an interesting thing i did i was over the chinese new year's holiday uh i think it's a unique time in 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 the way that uh our classmates actually goes back to their hometown so i just felt like it was a good opportunity considering it's my first time in china so i did some traveling you know i went up up north to shandong uh uh to qingdao jinan then tianjin then beijing then down to hangzhou and i'm finally coming back to shanghai and in that journey i because i wanted to experience like the most local i guess way of living as i can so i actually just kind of forced myself onto my classmates telling them i'm gonna sleep at your house i did bring a sleeping bag you know throughout the way and my own laundry basket so i could take it back to elva's house and wash that after i came back <laughs> but <laughs> No, it's just, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, kid jokes aside, um, that that journey was really fun. I think uh, not, 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 not only in the way that because Sieves doesn't represent Shanghai. Shanghai doesn't represent the rest of China. So you get to see a lot of different parts of China, and then you know being able to spend time with uh, different classmates uh, every city you go and actually have. You know, prolong conversation with these people, get to know each other better, and be invited to their home for a meal. I think that was really, really eye-opening and really grateful for that experience. I want to say <laughs> one more. I just think about is the actually the group, the assigned group. Mm -hmm. Like, so my turn one group actually, I think we probably one of the closest group. I will say because we are like, we just gather. Without any purpose, <laughs> like not only for not only for like assignment, but just gather and talk and then like have deep talk something. And the most like one moment one night that it was really unforgettable was, th and that time was like a uh, World Cup period. Like we ha had match in the mid midnight, and of course, and and then the next day we actually have a like. A big dude assignment dude. I forgot what assignment, but we actually have a big dude, and so our group was like just staying very very late. I think I I remember it was like we stayed till like three a.m. something in the just in a meeting room. We just bring everyone just bring late snacks, brings beers, brings wines, and connect the connect our like laptop to the big screen. To see the World Cup, and everyone forgot the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we gathered because of we had to finish the the, the project, assignment. the assignment, <laughs> which was due the next day in the morning, we just had a very like nice time talking to each other, to knowing more, and, and drinking wines and beers, watching World Cup, and this kind of like I feel like back kind of back to like university times or like. Yeah, didn't expect that we can have this kind of <laughs> experience with this age. I <laughs> mean, but it was like really unforgettable. We still study though. Yeah, we still yeah. study. So, okay. Yeah, we to, of to course preface, we finished the process. We yeah. we I, we've talked a lot about like friendship and sharing. We do actually study. We yeah. do have to work quite hard. Right. Um, even though it might seem like we don't. Uh, but I think. I think one of the things I've learned is uh, how to be tired all the time, and balance like work and life and friends, and then also it's just like making the most of it. Like Alex, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean like this. This is the whole environment that I feel like everyone to work hard and then play hard. We 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 usually set up a big party right after the the, the exam on the same day. Like you, we probably studied overnight the day before the exam, and when we finish it, we partied overnight. So this is exactly what I mean. Like, uh, this is kind of a a, a North America style uh, business school that everyone's try to s spend all their energies to try to dry them out. Self, I think that this is the fun part to be in the SIPS business school, and 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 I do really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Alex is the best at that. <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing you guys. So just one more thank you to George, Elva and Alex for joining us on the first episode of season two of our new podcast. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into NBA life at Seeds. If you have any questions or comments about this episode or the podcast in general, please feel free to reach out. Our email is in the podcast description. Stay tuned for our next episode.